our first story, former Minister of Education and a member of the National Democratic Congress, Lee Okran, says the NDC will restore 21st of September back to Founders Day, should the ruling MPP government change the day to 4th of August. His comments follow the proposal by President Ekufuado to move Founders Day from 21st September, which is the date of birth of Ghana's first president, to August 4, when the UGCC was formed. Speaking at the 108th anniversary celebration of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah at the CPP headquarters in Accra, Leo Kran stressed the need to maintain Kwame Nkrumah as the founder of Ghana. He can, he will change it and go back to the status quo. There is always a founder, a one person. There is one father for a child. There can be three, four fathers. One. And I mean, why, why, why are people worrying themselves trying to distort what has been there? When I was in school, eh, as a, a primary, no, the primary, middle school one, that was National Founders Day, 21st September. Read back, you will see, go into history. That was already Founders Day. It was abolished after CCC school. So MPP, NDC sent it back to those days. We just restored it. If people want to organize every day, they can do it, or any other day. So far as we are concerned, there is one founder. So many people who contributed, so many, including the workers of Takwa, that is where the CPP idea to uh, break away from the UGC started. The workers, the mine workers of Takwa, then the railway workers of Sekendi Takwa, the Texinokran, uh, Pobibaini, Njekelejewu, these were the men who struggled. What about the students of Cape Coast, eh? from, from uh, Augustine and Fantafim, who were sacked because they solidarized with the, uh, the big six, the so-called big six, who were sacked. And Kromar sympathized with them and founded Ghana National College and put those students there. What about them? What about those six people who were on the podium at the old program? Who, when they, uh, this thing, the independence of Ghana was being proclaimed. Have you seen any street named after them? You go to East Lagos, and Kokumba Street, Popo Street, uh, Dandelion Street, some strange plans. When you had people standing there, anywhere back, but you vote. And well, that's democracy. You vote and then the vote will not uh, do anything. But it will be recorded. It will be recorded. And recorded as Kabila today read the hands out. The hands out. It will be, it will be so. And when the opportunity, opportunity comes, it will be changed. <laughs> And the chairman of the Convention People's Party, Professor Edmondele, who also addressed the gathering, stated that the independent struggle of Ghana was with, without direction until the arrival of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. The CPP considers as unfortunate recent attempts by reactionary forces to once again attempt to rewrite the history of Ghana chairman, tell them all. and water down the contribution of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah to the emancipation of the black man, as well as Ghana's independence. Osajifo is the foundation stone of Ghana and a leading pacemaker for the emancipation of Africa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the independence struggle was without form and substance until the appointment of Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah as the General Secretary of the United Gold Coast Convention. UGCC on January 1948, after the formation of the UGCC on 4th August 1947, the appointment of Osaji for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah changed the course of the struggle for independence. Nkrumah began an intensive emancipation tour throughout the country, and with his unique impartial rhetoric, soon had the entire country simply with pan-African enthusiasm and demands for self-rule. And the director of elections for the party, James Kwabna Bonfe, referred to the Legislative Assembly Hansard of 3rd August 1956 as a highlight in Nkrumah's role in Ghana's independence. He urged members of parliament to be guided by the Hansard 
as they consider the bill to change Founders Day to the 4th of August. Finally, taking this challenge to the official realms by introducing a bill, as we are told in a leaf from the presidency, to parliament. I only want to implore our members of parliament that as they debate the Founders Day and Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Day or whatever they want to call it, we know that they are not bound by words of previous, any previous parliament, but they can be guided. And I just want to plead with them that as I made the effort to make 275 copies, I promise to do that, Mr. Chairman, of the debate on the floor of the Legislative Assembly on the third day of August 1956, which I have a copy in my hands, they should read the proceedings, the quality of language, the sequence of events, the narration of our history that preceded the vote, that eventually established in law. The opposition National Democratic Congress has vowed also to revert Founders Day to the 21st of September as it resist moves by government to obliterate gains made by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. This follows a proposal by government to move Founders Day to the 4th of August and will be observed as a holiday as well. As it stands now the 21st of September, uh, the birthday of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, which was instituted by the NDC in 2012 as Founders Day, has been changed to Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Day via an executive instrument by President Nanadu Dankwe Kufuado. But the NDC says it will resist any moves by the president to impose his family on the country. Hano Odame joined the party in a solidarity march and our reports. <laughs> President of the Republic of Ghana for an ally to be sent to Parliament to change the Founders Day from September 21 to August 4. The NDC says they will not allow this to happen. Here is Kwaku Anidoho. He's the Deputy General Secretary of the party. On the 6th of March 1957, Osage Dr. Kwame Nkrumah at the old polo grounds lowered the Union Jack of the British Crown Colony and hoisted the red, gold, green, and the black star flag of the Republic of Ghana. And we struck our national anthem for the first time. God bless our homeland, Ghana. Freedom! 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 60 years down the line, some imperial surrogates of the imperialist forces want to obliterate the memory of Kwame Nkrumah. It will not happen. It will not happen. It will not happen. Kwame Nkrumah never dies. For Professor Joshua Alabi, this is not the priority now for a country. We cannot decide to rewrite history. I think that as a nation, we should leave this behind us and think of how we can emancipate our people, help our people, get the best for them. That is where our focus should be. Our focus should not be thinking of rewriting history. I don't think that's our focus now. We move beyond that. We all did this history in our class one, class two, class three, class four. You go all over the world, international books all over, it is written. So why are we as a people trying to rewrite history? I think that we should drop this. Is that we should drop this and move on. We should really spend time on some of these things. Nkuma is the founder of this country, known in Ghana, known in Africa, and this is known all over the world, right? So our focus now is when you win power, think of how you move another step. So another government comes and then moves to the next step. Not to be debating who founded this country. It is written and it's written. I think that we should drop it. I also spoke to some party supporters as to why they decided to join this particular match. NDC is still in town. We are not dead. You can see the crowd. I think you also saw the crowd. So if you think we are we are people that we don't feel the hardship now, will we come out? We are coming out for our people to know that we are in hardship. So they should come out. Let's vote agenda, agenda 2020 so that we will elect JM back. 
People are crying at Makola. They were crying, JM Bai, JM Bai. Why are they doing so? Because they can't see what is going on. And we want JM to come back. No JM, no 2020. So have you seen anything good the MPP has done since they came to power? Anything good? In fact, I will not stand here and lie. No. And make sure that we reorganize and motivate our branch, branches. Inshallah, 2020, with one, oneness and togetherness and unity, we shall win the elections. My name is Hannah Odame for Joy News. All right. All right. And when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown in 1966, part of the campaign to wipe out his memory was the burning of his books and other literature about him. 51 years on, the Kwame Nkrumah Pan-African Center returned to the University of Ghana, one of the places his books were bent to relaunch his book, The Dark Days in Ghana. Manasseh Azure Awone was at the event, which was to commemorate Kwame Nkrumah's birthday and reports. The Kwame Nkrumah Institute of African Studies at the University of Ghana was today filled with men and women of different ages and statuses in society. They were united by the memory of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the man who has brought much division and controversy in the political landscape in recent weeks. The executive director of the Kwame Nkrumah Pan-African Center, Dr. Dana Nantoma, told the government that what Nkrumah stood for is still as relevant today as it was 51 years ago. He is credited as the most published president in the world with 21 books and pamphlets to his name. The first president and the founder of the Republic of Ghana. It is against this backdrop that the Kwame Nkrumah Pan-African Center is launching the Kwame Nkrumah Dialogue Series with the objective of engaging scholars, policymakers, young people in particular, and all people of African descent, wherever they may be, on the ideas and policies of Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Unlike a typical Nkrumah event, this gathering was dominated by young people, students of some tertiary institutions. He was a socialist, and as a socialist, he wanted to the, he wanted the state to be in charge of the distribution of the state resources. And then I know um, he was the one who built UCC, University of Cape Coast, and then Kwame Nkrumah Science and Technology University. Yeah. Kwame Nkrumah stood for Pan-Africanism. He's a grandpapa for Pan-Africanism. Kwame Nkrumah talked African. He had a vision for Africa. We, the, apart from our problems being a part of um, National Liberation Council's things that he did at the time when he overthrew, when um, after Nkrumah was overthrown, Nkrumah looked at Ghana being economically independent. So he brought up certain factories, research centers, things that are going to help us survive on our own without any European or um, outside influence. So in Kumar's things that he looked for, the things that he, he envisioned for Africa and Ghana, if, but it, if was maintained, it could have helped all of us. The main highlight of today's event was the launch of the African edition of Kwame Nkrumah's book, Dark Days in Ghana, a book he wrote after his overthrow. Kwame Nkrumah's daughter, Samia Yaba Nkrumah said, the debate should move from Nkrumah's personality to what he stood for. We all know where we stand. We all know and we believe that Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah is the founder of the new nation, Ghana. But the last thing I think he would have wanted, the last thing Osajifo would have wanted is for us instead of delving into his policies, his ideas, and his philosophy, to be arguing amongst ourselves about who founded this new nation. The historical records are there for all to see and read. She wants the youth to read about Nkrumah in order to have a meaningful debate on his legacy and ideology. The hundreds of industries, the Akosombo Dam, Tama Township and, um, and um, Harbour, 
Ghana joining the Nana Line movement, spearheading it. The OEU, Ghana spearheading our march towards the Union of African States. We all know what founded that new nation. It's not a man, it's a philosophy and an ideology. Some young people held a dialogue to discuss Nkrumah's ideas in today's Ghana. For Joy News, Manasse Azore Arena reporting. In other news, residents of Weja, a farming community in the Ghana South municipality, are struggling to get access to portable water. You would recall the community some few months ago was almost submerged following the spillage of excess water from the hydro dam. Well, now the area has been hit by water shortage and residents say they were not informed prior to the situation. While residents rely on the use of sachet water to bath, others resort to the Weja River for survival. Join News for Giver Medecavis to the community and has come through with the following report. One of the small municipalities in the Greater Accra community, I'm talking about Weja, the community that was hit by the spillage of the overflow of the Weja Dam some three months ago. Today, few months down the lane, the same community has been hit by water shortage and the communities within this environment are complaining relentlessly about um, this condition. Uh, we'll be speaking to some of the people within the community just to give me an understanding of um, how this water shortage affects their lives. Some people have told me that they fetch water from this river behind me. Others too have um, told me that there is this uh, trench that has been dug in the middle of the road and then that is where the construction is taking place. Residents are not aware when they're going to finish for them to have access to clean water. For how long now in Suno Emma? About three days in Suno Emma. For the past three days we have not had water. Not only this area but it extends to STC. We have no idea why the water is not flowing. Sometimes they close it but it does not take long for them to open it. If you don't store water, there is none to use unless you resort to pure water to drink and bath. Or better still, resort to the river behind us to boil for drinking and bathing. We have no idea why the water is not flowing. No one has communicated anything to us. If we get up at 3 a.m., it will go hunt for the water till 6 before you will get home. If people have taken advantage and have inflated their price from 40 pesos to 1 CD, we will be pleading with you to come to our aid. We buy uh, pure water to bath. That's what we have to do. It's very serious. You know, most time you know it's one, two, three days, but this is for about 10 days now. So many people used to get water from the Weja River, but we will buy pure water. Um, 100 meters away from here, at most there should be a sign indicating that there is a ditch here. A travel through this road has shown no sign, so drivers will have to drive close with caution, and then before they get here, you don't know what is going to happen. Um, an eyewitness was just narrating a, an incident to me about um, a policeman who nearly got himself into the ditch. They have dug a ditch here at the middle of Weja and Oblogo Road. One evening, a police dispatch rider fell in the ditch. We helped him out. Most often, cars also get stuck in the ditch. The water company have to cover this before another disaster hits us. And that's it for the news. We have uh, a lot more news. We'll be looking at the newspapers and we'll have a lot of interactivity on the various online portals. Of course, we have to visit majoronline.com. But please make sure that you keep your comments coming through. On Facebook, we have a page, Join News on TV. It's where we stream live and also on the channel YouTube where you can also watch our streams live. Majoronline TV, please go look for that channel on YouTube. <laughs>